Located in the Midwestern United States, the Ohio River is a 981 mile long river flowing southwesterly from Pennsylvania and ending at its mouth on the Mississippi River at the southern end of Illinois. It is the third largest river by discharge volume in the United States and is the source of drinking water for 3 million people. It is heavily industrialized and populated with heavy barge cargo traffic carrying oil, steel, and many other industrial goods. Along its banks are the cities of Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, and Louisville. As I ride into Indiana, I decide to take a farm road that runs along the Ohio River, thinking it would be a shortcut to the city of Evansville. I just found myself in a county road that goes right alongside the Ohio River. It is muddy. <laughs> this road's no joke. It's just mud, mud, and more mud. I'm like digging in. It's tiring. <laughs> But I'm getting through it and I'm full of mud. My tires have been really sunk in there. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> I don't trust this puddle. <laughs> not, not with my, my thinner tires, so I'm gonna push around it. Impassable. With the bike, I have to push it along the edges here. Gorgeous though. Soybeans, with over 350 million tons farmed globally each year, is considered an important commodity providing much needed oil and protein. In the United States, it allows for large industrial scale raising of farm animals possible and is also widely used as a substitute for other protein based processed foods. I can barely keep the bike straight in that heavy mud. I need a hose. Back in pavement. That was a hole there. Fine, that's deep. It was a lot of work. I'm at Newburgh Lock and Dam. Just made uh, about 20, not 30 miles, not 35 miles from uh, Owensboro through that muddy mess of uh, farm roads, which was absolutely a blast. And I'm heading on a bike trail to Newburgh and then Evansville, Indiana. Newburgh Lock and Dam is the 16th of 21 Lock and Dams on the Ohio River. The purpose of Lock and Dams is to maintain safe water depths allowing for successful trade and commerce on waterways throughout the year by managing water flow. With about 120,000 citizens, Evansville, often referred to as Crescent Valley or River City, is the third most populated city in Indiana. It is the commercial, medical, and cultural hub of the southwestern region of the state and the Illinois-Indiana-Kentucky tri-state area. I'm in Indiana for the first day and there's bike paths and road, roads that are friendly to bicyclists with really good signs and signs like this on 
the downtown areas for people to enjoy bicycling and exercising. It's been raining all night. Thundering, lightning, it's been a show. It's been six hours of non-stop rain. I've been stuck in this bathroom for an hour and a half, recharging my batteries and washing my shoes. They were full of mud and disgustingness from yesterday. There's more clouds coming, but I'm gonna take that window and try to ride 28 miles to the next town. And uh, there's a Pretty nice hotel for not so expensive, so I might take it and dry my stuff again and hope that <laughs> this wet weather for the last week uh, has got an end to it because I'm ready to ride for real. Looks like a nice bike trail. Looks like it's two miles of this. <laughs> Pretty awesome. It just will not quit raining. I'm just gonna give into the rain and be rained on until, it, until I'm not. Founded in 1965, the University of Southern Indiana is a public university just outside Evansville. USI enrolls over 10,000 dual credit, undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral students in more than 80 majors. Just rode through the entire campus of University of Southern Indiana. Really pretty. Clear skies. For now. this storm coming like the weather forecast was saying so I'm gonna go to uh, New Harmony here seated on the banks of the Wabash River is the historic town of New Harmony it's a peaceful town with its quiet streets and restored 1800s buildings I got flat ground huge shoulder temperatures in the high 60s if not low 70s a little bit of a headwind no traffic really some but not much it's pretty cool I'm heading to the interstate right now I got another three miles to go Indiana state motto the crossroads of America is due to its 13 major interstate highways its historical status as a major railroad hub and the canals that once crossed the state. At 953 miles, Interstate 64 is an east-west highway from Chesapeake, Virginia to Wentzville, Missouri. Every time a truck goes by, I go up from 15 miles an hour to 17 or so. It's 
especially the ones that come tight. They're giving me too much room. As much as I try avoiding the freeways, at times, I find it inevitable. In this instance, the bridge I was planning on crossing the Wabash River on, the New Harmony Bridge, was closed due to having structural issues, and Interstate 64 was my next best option. I really didn't want to leave the interstate, but I made it across the Wabash River, so I gotta find my best route now to get where I'm going. I'm trying to do over 70 miles today, and I feel it good today, like without the rain, cool weather. I got 61 miles to go to my campground. And I've done over 10 now, so I got a good day ahead. Illinois and Iowa are the top corn producing states of what is known as the Corn Belt, a region of the Midwestern United States that since the 1850s has dominated the country's corn farming. The United States is the largest producer of corn in the world. Corn is largely used for the production of ethanol, which is blended with gasoline to make fuels for automobiles, reducing the net greenhouse gas emissions by an average of 34%. The byproduct of ethanol is called distiller's grain, and it's mainly used for livestock feed. One bushel of corn weighing in at 56 pounds produces 2.8 gallons of ethanol and 18 pounds of distiller's grain. beware of dog signs so I kind of made a u-turn on that road and decided to get on the main road here and see if I can make up some time I still have 45 miles to go and I've done 30 or so I've been going on these roads that are farm roads obviously there's just farm country everywhere here since i left the interstate 30 miles ago or so i think i'm close to 50 miles today so far so i have to go either north or south to catch all these roads that go west because i'm you know going west but it's constantly coming in and out of these roads every one and a half to three and a half maybe four miles and some are paved perfectly and some are not and some are just gravel like this one and they're a blast but they wear you out too gorgeous though no cars no anything red tail hawks everywhere I've seen them all day long and just nature like deer nothing else deer and the hogs and birds of all kinds, just gorgeous. Gonna keep going, I got another 28 miles to go. A little lunch. <laughs> 